Hey, what's going on people? I hope you guys are doing good. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the iPhone 14 once again, except this time we're gonna go over several tips and tricks that you should do or try as soon as you get your phone. I'm a little bit late to the party, but nonetheless, these are some great tips for you, so let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So just like all of my other tips and tricks videos, the very first thing I recommend is getting yourself a good case and a screen protector. The case that I'm rocking is from Pataka. This case is awesome. Like I'm a huge fan of Pataka cases. I like the fact that they're all made of carbon fiber, they're lightweight, ultra thin and provide great protection. This is their Pro Series, which retains all of those features, but then takes things to the next level by offering covers for the buttons, and it also hugs the phone a little bit more. This is seriously one of my favorite cases I've ever used, and I hope that Pataka opens up this series and brings it to more devices. As far as the screen protector is concerned, I'm using the Spigen Glass TR. It's like 14 or 15 bucks for two. The installation is the easiest out there. It's a great screen protector, has a wonderful oleophobic coating, so it feels just like you're using the regular display. It doesn't interfere with clarity whatsoever. And once you put a case on your phone, it basically goes edge to edge, and I can't recommend it enough. The next tip or trick that I have for you is how to take better screenshots. The iPhone has a great screenshot tool as well as a screen recorder, and I don't think a lot of people are taking advantage of the features that are built into these tools in order to get the most out of them. So let me break it down for you. The first thing that I wanna show you when it comes to getting better screenshots is how to take a screenshot of a full page. So as you can see, this page is kinda long. It's a shopping cart on the Samsung website. So if I take a screenshot, I have two different ways I can save it. I can save it as just the screenshot that, um, you know, just the bare basics, like a regular screenshot, or I can tap on full page, which will capture the entire website page, including the full length of my cart. Now I can save this as a PDF file in the files app. So if I tap done, you can see it gives me the option to save the PDF, or I can copy it right now and then delete it right away. So it's no longer gonna be saved to my device, but instead stay on my clipboard, and then from there I can paste it in a message or an email. Now before I do that, say I want to annotate, you know, add like an arrow or maybe a circle, a box, to bring someone's attention to, say, the TV itself. So I can go about doing this a few different ways. I can simply draw a circle, which looks a little messy, or I can draw a circle and then hold my finger down and it automatically turns to a real circle versus whatever it was that I just drew. Let's say instead of a circle, I wanted to do an arrow. Well, I can, you know, draw an arrow like this, or I can draw an arrow like this and then hold my finger down and look at that, it turning into an arrow. The same thing can be done with a square. So I can draw a square, hold my finger down, and there you go. You can also do this with a triangle. So I'll draw a triangle, hold my finger down, and there you go. So there's a bunch of different shapes that you can do simply by drawing them and holding your finger down, and it will actually draw that full shape, which is really, really nice, especially when it comes to annotations and things like that. Of course, if you don't feel like drawing it and holding your finger down, you can simply tap on the plus symbol in the bottom right corner and then choose a shape down here. Or you can add a magnifier. So if I bring the magnifier over this area right here, I can increase the size of the magnification, and then I can increase the magnification. Then I can tap on the plus symbol once again, tap on opacity, and then dial down the opacity of everything outside of that magnification. That way it draws everyone's attention to this area right here. So that's how you can get a little bit more uh, out of these screenshots and you know perfect them and make them look a little bit more, I guess, professional. The next tip or trick that I have for you is to check out the new weather app. So a couple of years ago, Apple purchased Dark Skies, which was one of the best weather apps inside of the iOS App Store and the Google Play Store. We're finally able to see a lot of those elements from that app being brought over to Apple's own weather app. Things like the ability to tap on a specific day and then get a breakdown through the entire day of the forecast and be able to filter that forecast into things like precipitation, the heat index, humidity, etc. We're also able to check out the new radar, which is way more advanced and more fluid than it was before. And overall, it's just a great weather app with tons of features, zero ads, and for once, I honestly have no reason to download a third-party weather app. Next up is Private Relay. If you're an iCloud Plus member like I am, then you can easily take advantage of this feature. It's not new by any means, but if you're new to the iPhone, then it's probably new to you. It's kind of like a VPN, but not really. In any case, it's really powerful, and here's how to check it out. If you want to take advantage of Private Relay, you're going to go into your settings, tap on your name at the top to pull up your iCloud account, tap on iCloud, 
And as long as you're an iCloud Plus member, you can tap on Private Relay and then toggle it on. From here, it's going to hide your IP address as well as your browsing activity inside of Safari, and that's the key, Safari and Safari only from uh, the person that might own the Wi-Fi network that you're browsing on or even your carrier. So it's really cool to see that um, Apple is you know, giving you extra layers of security to prevent all of your browsing activity from being sold to different companies and things like that. But the problem is it only works in Safari, so all these third-party apps and things like that are not going to take advantage of Private Relay, which is very unfortunate, and that's where having a VPN plus Private Relay will definitely give you the most secure browsing uh, possible. I'm gonna drop a link in the description to an article that I read that gave me some more information on Private Relay, so feel free to check there if you wanna learn more about how it works and what you can do with it. The next tip or trick that I have for you is once again, not really new, but once I found it, I wanted to throw it into this video because it was new to me, and that's the ability to make restaurant reservations as well as ride booking through like Uber or Lyft right inside of Apple Maps. In order to take advantage of restaurant reservations and ride sharing apps inside of Maps, you're gonna go into your settings, scroll all the way down until you find Maps, tap on Maps, scroll down, and then at the very bottom, you're going to see ride booking and restaurant booking. Just tap on one of those, and then tap on Uber to enable ride booking extensions and also show rides from new apps such as Lyft and things like that. Then go ahead and back out, go under restaurant booking, and then you can toggle on table booking extensions. The only one that I have on my phone right now is Yelp, so I'll go ahead and toggle that on. Now if I go inside of Maps, I can book a reservation at a restaurant or I can book a ride through Uber or Lyft. Let me give you an example of how this works. Let's say I wanted to book a ride to my local Best Buy from my house. So I already have the directions pulled up inside of Maps and I'm under Drive. So you can see if I drove myself, it would only take me 14 minutes, yada, yada, yada. But let's say I don't have a car. I'm gonna tap on drive, and at the very bottom it says ride share. I tap on ride share. You can see it's gathering rates from Uber, and there you go. So it's gonna be a 15 minute wait for my ride for Uber X, and it gives me my fee. And of course we have Uber Black and then Uber Black hourly. And this also works for restaurant reservations. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of um, popular restaurants around here for me to show you, but um, this is how you can book a ride really easily right inside of Apple Maps. So when it comes to restaurant booking, when you look up the restaurants, if they take reservations, you'll see the option right here to reserve, and you just tap on that. It might prompt you to download a different app rather than Yelp, so it's asking me to download OpenTable because that's how they uh, prefer to you know, take reservations. So if I download that, I can make a reservation all done right inside of Apple Maps. Voice memos on iPhones are definitely not new, but the microphones on the iPhone 14 series seem to have been improved and they sound really good. Like so good that lately I've been using voice memos to do voiceovers for social media videos and no one has said a thing. And that's without an external microphone. Let me show you how to get the best quality and what you can do with it. So voice memos has become a very powerful tool that I use all the time, especially for social media videos. Let me show you how I have it set up. We're gonna go into settings, scroll down until you see voice memos, tap on that, and then change the audio quality from compressed to lossless. This is gonna give you the best quality audio possible. Then I also toggle off location-based naming since I can customize the naming myself. Once that's done, check this out. We're gonna go into the voice memos app. I'm gonna tap record. This is a test using the onboard microphones on the iPhone 14 Pro, and I gotta say, the audio sounds great. So I'm gonna stop that. Now, if I tap on the little settings in the left-hand corner, I can remove the spaces or the silence in the voice memo. And I can save this, or since it's backed up to the cloud, I can automatically download it on a different Apple device. So one thing I forgot to mention, if you're in a location that has a lot of room noise, you can actually tap on the settings in the left, and then right below skip silence, you can tap on enhance recording and it's going to enhance your dialogue as well as remove background noise. And it works pretty good. One thing that Apple has been missing for years is a battery percentage instead of just using the little picture. Luckily that's changed and we can now enable that in the settings. Let me show you how to do it. So if you wanna get your battery percentage like I have up here in the top right, you can see it says 74%. You're gonna go into your settings, scroll down until you get to battery, then tap on battery. And then right up here at the top, just toggle on battery percentage, and that's it. Now you can see the exact level your battery is at, at any given point.
The iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max feature always on displays. This means whenever your phone is locked, you still can make out whatever is on your screen because it's always on. A lot of people may not want this feature turned on though, so you can turn it off in the settings. Let me show you how to do that. If for some reason you feel like always on display is draining your battery or you just don't like it because it is a personal preference, let me show you how to turn it off. What you're gonna do is go into your settings, scroll down and then go under display and brightness, scroll down until you see always on and just toggle that off. Now, if I go to my lock screen, you can see it actually gives me a black screen because always on display is turned off. But personally, I like it, so I'm gonna go ahead and toggle it back on. One thing a lot of people have been wanting for a while now is haptic feedback on the keyboard. So whenever you're typing, you get a subtle vibration. Well, we now have that, and it pairs beautifully with the sounds and clicks that come from the keyboard, and I gotta say, it's like crazy satisfying. Let me show you how to turn it on. The keyboard haptics are incredible, and I gotta say, like they really do add to that typing experience, especially if you pair it with the clicks. It's not for everybody, but I think that you're gonna find it extremely satisfying if you just give it a shot. So what you're gonna do is go into your settings, then go under sounds and haptics, scroll down until you see keyboard feedback, tap on that, and then make sure haptic is toggled on. Now, whenever you type, you'll get a very subtle vibration every single time you hit a key. If you're anything like me, then when you're trying to fall asleep, sometimes you like a little background noise, like an oscillating fan, some light static, maybe the sounds of the ocean or rain, things like that to help you drift off to sleep. Did you know you have all of that built onto your iPhone, like straight out of the box? Let me show you how to access all of those features. So if you wanna check out these background sounds for like whenever you're sleeping or just relaxing, go into settings, do a search for background, and you'll see background sounds pop up. Just tap on that and check this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into background sounds. I'm going to toggle it on, and that's the sound of rain. You can adjust the rain volume. You can also adjust these settings down here, which is basically like other media. So if like you were listening to a video, you can continuously have that play with the rain sound. Not sure why you would wanna do that. But if you don't want rain, you can also do stream. So tell me, that will definitely make you pee. So you might wanna be careful. That is, uh, that's peeing sounds right there. Then you have ocean, pretty nice. Then you have dark noise, you have bright noise, and you have balanced noise. And if you don't want anything, you can just toggle it off. I mean, personally, I love this because I use this anyways to help me fall asleep from time to time. One feature I recently discovered that I had no idea existed was the ability to have Siri hang up phone calls for you. It's not turned on by default. You do have to go in and toggle this on, but once you do, all you have to do is ask Siri to hang up whenever you're done with a phone call. If you wanna turn on the Siri hang up feature, you're gonna go into your settings, scroll down until you get to Siri and search, tap on that. Look for call hang up, tap on that, and make sure it's toggled on. Let me give you a quick demonstration. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and call Dennis here. So it's ringing and he answered. So now I can have a conversation, really weird with the echo. And then, hey Siri, hang up. And then there you go. She can easily hang up the phone call. It's great for like hands-free calling such as in a car or if you're using your watch or if you're using AirPods. And also great for if you get to like someone's answer machine and you don't wanna leave a message. However, if you're leaving a message, it's kinda awkward because it will get you, it will record your voice command at the very end of that message. Or if you're having an argument with someone, it's probably not the best to use the uh, Siri hang up feature because they're gonna hear that and it's gonna be kind of awkward. But nonetheless, still a great feature to try and use. The next tip or trick that I have for you has to do with reminders. Did you know the Reminders app now allows you to create templates? So that way you can easily access different formats on the go for different things like groceries, maybe a shot list if you're into content creation, or to-do list. Let me show you how to set them up. I've always been a fan of Apple's Reminders app. It's just simplistic and it just works. But I'm really happy to see that they're taking things a step further with the ability to create templates. So if you wanna create a template, you're just gonna to go to Add List inside the Reminders app. And then over here in the right, you can select any templates that you've already created. If you wanna create a new template, just basically start a reminder list. So I have one right here for a to-do list. So all I have to do is start adding like different um, to-dos or different, uh, different items in the list. And then I can create like sub list and things like that. And then once I have my template created, 
I go up here, tap on the three little dots, and then I can select save as template. So if I tap on that and then tap save, and then back up, go under the templates here, you can see there is my to-do list right there. And all I have to do is tap on that. I can rename it and then I can create a new list from that template. So you can see I've already created a couple here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the one that I just did. I have a shopping list and a grocery list. If I tap on grocery list, we'll rename it to target. Go ahead and let that load. Now when I pull it up, you can see I have my template right here broken up into different categories for shopping. So I have meat, dairy, vegetables, fruits, essentials, and baby. Personally, I really appreciate this because it's free and it's inside of an app that comes pre-installed on your phone, so it works great. And this is a feature that you have to pay for a lot of the times with third-party apps. This next one is for all of my content creators out there that do a lot of posts on Instagram and TikTok and you tend to use hashtags religiously. Let me show you a quick shortcut that has to do with the iOS keyboard. You're gonna love this one. So check this out. Let me show you a little trick here to speed up your social media posting. This has saved me a ton of time when it comes to inputting my hashtags. If I do hashtag TT for TikTok and then space, you can see it fills in all of my default TikTok hashtags. If I do hashtag IG space, you can see it fills in all of my default Instagram hashtags. Hashtag AP is for my Apple hashtags and I have quite a bit more that I'm gonna go ahead and add to my keyboard. So let me show you how I did this. I'm gonna go into settings, then go under general, then go under keyboard, then tap on text replacement, tap on the little plus symbol in the top right. And then from here, I can build out my phrase. So the phrase is gonna be the hashtags that you want added to your post. So it could be anything from like hashtag Samsung, hashtag uh, Galaxy S22. So I can make all of my Samsung hashtags for all of my Samsung posts. And then once that's done, I go under shortcut, which is gonna be the keyboard shortcut. So I do hashtag SAM for Samsung. Now if I tap save, we're gonna go ahead and go back to this post here. Let me go ahead and delete all of these. Now if I do hashtag SAM space, you can see it fills in the two Samsung hashtags that I just created. Like I said, this is a lifesaver and it's super cool and it's going to save you a ton of time with your social media post. Did you know the iPhone has a hidden back button? Sorta, of, kinda, like back here around where the Apple logo is at? I know this isn't a new feature, so you probably have already heard of this, but if you haven't, let me show you where to access it and what you can do with it. So check this out. I know that the hidden back button isn't necessarily new, but it's still a really cool feature and a lot of people might've forgotten about it or maybe that you're just new to iPhone and you don't know about this, but it basically turns this little back area on the phone into like a touch sensitive area. So I have mine set up for a double tap on the back will launch my camera and then a triple tap will launch a 30 minute timer that I can use for reading or for leisure time, downtime or for a workout. So let me show you how I did all this. Let me go ahead and stop this timer. What I'm gonna do is go into settings, then we're gonna go down to accessibility, then we're gonna tap on touch, scroll all the way down until you see back tap, make sure that's toggled on, and then from here you can set up the different taps. So a double tap for me is set up to launch the camera, and then a triple tap is set up to launch a 30 minute timer, which is actually a Siri shortcut. So you can go inside of the Siri Shortcuts app, which I will have a video coming soon on how to set all that up. And then you can create your own Siri Shortcut, whether it's to launch an app or to do an action like start a timer and then assign that to the back button tap. Pretty cool and very useful. Have you ever been in a position where you wish you could do a screen recording of your Apple Watch? Whether it was because you're developing an app, you wanna showcase your new watch face, or if you're just doing a tutorial or tips and tricks video like this, well, here's an easy way to do it, and you don't have to do it on your watch, you're actually doing it on your phone. Let me show you. If you make tech content, especially on the Apple Watch, you're absolutely going to love this. So what you're gonna do is go into settings, scroll down, go under accessibility, scroll down until you see Apple Watch mirroring, tap on that and go ahead and toggle that on. Now it's gonna search for my Apple Watch. It should find it here in a minute. And boom, there you go. So there's my Apple Watch, if I swipe, to go to my other watch face. You can see it changes on my iPhone. If I go back to my original watch face, just like so, let's see, there we go. And then if I launch an app, like the Tesla one here, 
You can see it launches it. I can go back. I can launch the weather. And it's all happening in real time on my phone. Now, if I want to record this, all I would have to do is just start a screen recording on my phone and it will record my Apple Watch face right here on my device so that way I can use that in my content. I think it's really useful. Even if you're not a content um, creator and you just make you know, Apple Watch faces, maybe you're an Apple Watch app developer, this could be really useful. So to go along with Apple Watch mirroring, you might want to do a screen recording. In order to do that, you have to go into Control Center and make sure that it's enabled. Let me show you how to do that as well as how you can customize Control Center to make it a little bit more functional for you. Now I know that Control Center is definitely nothing new and most of you watching this video are probably very familiar with it, but I've received several questions about how I do my screen recordings and it's all done through Control Center using the built-in screen recorder function right here. But you do have to set it up inside of the Control Center settings. So we go into settings, then we're gonna go under Control Center on the main page here, and then you'll see screen recording. Now I already have mine set up, but by default, you might see it down here under the more controls. So what you're gonna do is just find it where it says screen recording, tap on the plus symbol, it'll bring it up to your included controls, and then you can drag it to the top or just organize it to your liking. That way you can access these different commands on the fly. There's a lot of stuff that you can do inside control center, such as add a stopwatch, sound recognition, quick note, notes, magnifier, tons of stuff in here. And once you have it organized, when you pull down control center, you'll see it right here. On top of that, there's other things that you can do like force pressing on certain things. So if I force press on the screen recorder, you can see not only can I start a screen recording, but if I tap on something like Instagram, I can start a broadcast. I also can toggle on and off the microphone. If I back out of this and then force press on the brightness, I have different settings down here, such as true tone, night shift, and dark mode. Force pressing on the, the, the sound here does nothing. So that was, that was definitely my fault. Force pressing on focus brings up my focus modes. Force pressing on the toggles up here and then force pressing on Bluetooth pulls up all of my Bluetooth devices. So a lot of stuff that you can do inside a control center, it's very useful. So I felt the need to kind of bring it back for this video because I think it's come a long way. So when it comes to PDFs on iOS and iPhones, Markup is nothing new, but did you know that there's a brand new full PDF editor inside the Files app? Like it allows you to do everything from fill in different spaces in a PDF document to signing documents. Extremely powerful. Let me show you how to access it. If you have an iPhone that runs iOS 16, then you can take full advantage of this next tip and trick, which is the new PDF editor. It's very powerful and I love it, especially on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. So if I go into the files app here and then pull up a PDF, which I have like this fake contract, so I'll go ahead and load it. You have this little symbol in the bottom right corner, which is a box with three dots and a pencil or pen. Just tap on that and boom, I'm now in this brand new PDF editor and it is awesome. So you can see it highlights all the individual boxes where I need to put in text. So if I select the box here, you can see I can start inputting my text. If I select this one here, I can continue inputting text. And if I go all the way down to the bottom where I need to sign, all I have to do is tap down here. You can see the little plus symbol pops up in the bottom right. Tap on that, tap on add signature, select your signature. You can resize it and then just drag it where you need to place it. And now I've signed the document. This thing is very, very powerful. And usually PDF editors like this, you have to pay for whether it's a one-time fee or a monthly uh, subscription. So seeing that this is free and built into my iPhone just really makes me happy. So I'm very excited to um, use this moving forward. So definitely check this out because depending on what you do for a living, it could be really useful. Last but not least, we can't forget the dynamic island. There's not a whole lot to cover here, but I did find a really cool game that's free inside the iOS app store that allows you to utilize the dynamic island in a really fun way. So let's go over that now. So this video would not be complete without a little dynamic island talk. So outside of it being really cool for notifications, for timers, the camera app and things like that, you can also download third party game apps to take advantage of it, such as this app called Hit the Island. So if I open up the game here, it's going to be like paddleboard pretty much. So I'm going to hit the ball against the, the dynamic island up here. And after so many hits, 
another ball will appear and it gets a little bit harder, a little bit faster. And it's just a fun way to uh, kill some time and also an interesting take on the uh, dynamic island. I'm not very good at it. I think it's after five points, uh, you'll see the other ball pop up. So we're at four, go ahead and let it go to five and then we'll, uh, we'll stop this. So there you go. So now you can see the color has changed. And I think maybe it's 10 that the other ball pops up. But yeah, that's a quick look at uh, Hit the Island. Actually, I'm, if I just stay here, I might be able to just win. Look at this. I don't have to do anything. Huh. I just found a sweet spot to the game. Never mind. So that's uh, Hit the Island. Another thing that you can do is if you are a Reddit user and you use Apollo, you can open up Apollo, go into your settings, go under General, Go all the way down to the bottom and you'll see Pixel Pals, tap on that and you can pull up either a cat or a dog and you can see the dog walking across the top here on the dynamic island. There's the cat, the cat is sleeping, pull up the dog and of course the dog is just like my dog in real life and going crazy or sleeping. If you pay for Apollo, you can use the hedgehog, fox or I don't even know how to say that, oxalatl turtle, it looks like a pig. But you have like little digital pets up here, which are, um, they're interesting to say the least, but once you leave Apollo, it disappears. So like I said, there's like some cool third party apps that um, take advantage of the Dynamic Island. And it's just, it's just fun. It's not uh, practical by any means. It's just a fun way to uh, kill some time. So there you go. That was 14 plus tips and tricks for the brand new iPhone 14 series. Whether you have a Pro, Pro Max, a regular 14 or a 14 plus, most of these tips and tricks should be beneficial to you. Let me know in the comment section, do you have anything to add to this video? I love hearing from you guys and you always give me great ideas for content. So make sure to comment down below. If you did like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content just like this and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one. Wow, that was like the best outro I've ever done in my life.